Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Caleb Grantham. I'm a stewardship coordinator for the Nature Conservancy down here, and I'm going to be joined by Nathan Spiegel, a colleague of mine who's a burn crew manager down here for TNC. And we're going to talk to you a little bit more on a partnership and stewardship and uh, what TNC is up to down here in Southern Illinois, highlighting the uh, interagency habitat and fuels crew. So I'm going to kind of give an overview um, of the program, the evolution, and um, Nathan is then going to follow up with uh, diving deep into our timber stand improvement and firework we do. So with that, um, for those of you who might not be totally aware of uh, what TNC is, it's a nonprofit organization, and I just wanted to share a little more uh, info on it. So it's a global environmental organization. Our mission is to preserve and protect the lands and waters on which all life depends, and our vision is a world where people and nature can thrive. TNC was founded in 1951, and since then has protected more than 100 million acres of natural areas around the world, and now operates on the ground in 72 countries and in all 50 U.S. states. So TNC staff and volunteers work across the globe to protect our world's natural places and understand how nature and people can benefit one another. Uh, TNC has more than 600 scientists on staff, including ecologists, hydrologists, biologists, economists, and social scientists. Their finding and expertise underscore and inform all of our work. Contributions of trustees are also critically important to our mission. These individuals are leaders in the communities and philanthropists who are essential to our mission. Trustees are CEOs, scientists, financial advisors, legal, and marketing experts. So bringing that more to uh, Illinois, uh, TNC's Illinois chapter is a leader in supporting our organization around the world. Since being founded in 1958, um, TNC has protected nearly 90,000 acres with partners, and uh, we own more than 16,000 acres across our preserves. Although known as our nation's prairie state in Illinois, unfortunately, less than one tenth of one percent of these natural places remain today. What we learn here affects conservation around the world, from the grasslands of Nechusa up in Franklin Grove to the grasslands of Mongolia, from the Mississippi River to the Amazon, from the Midwestern Great Lakes to those of Africa. Our 70 staff members engage in conservation, science, fundraising, and marketing across the state, and our 26,000 members and 30 board members make our operations possible. So just wanted to give a little background. And with that, we will dive deep now into our local work, uh, highlighting the interagency habitat and fuels crew. So we've had some staff transitions and, and changes uh, over the years. Um, this program started in 2016. And uh, here's our picture of our current members, um, Theron Hobson, myself, Ruth Compost, and Nathan Spiegel. The shots during a uh, prescribed fire last fall at um, Giant City. We were burn, helping uh, IDNR out and burn the uh, Stone Fort unit. So a little background on each. Uh, Theron Hobson is a Southern Illinois program director. He's been with TNC a little over 22 years and originally uh, worked up at Emmaquan along the Illinois River. Uh, myself, I uh, grew up in Hillsborough, Illinois, uh, central, small town, and have been down in Southern Illinois for a little over a decade now. Went to school at SIU and uh, studied forestry. And I've been with TNC now for about seven and a half years. Um, and then our newest member, Ruth Campos, uh, just joined us last fall. Uh, this was her first burn and a warm welcome um, in Illinois. So she's been based in Utah for several years, but has worked throughout the West for the Bureau of Land Management, the uh, U.S. Forest Service, Utah and Montana Conservation Corps, and most recently serving as a member of the BLM Smoky Hell Attack crew in the Arizona Strip District. So it's great to have her uh, aboard, and this was a cool way to uh, kind of get to know the landscape down here last fall. Um, and then moving to the right is Nathan Spiegel. Uh, he grew up in Taylorville, Illinois, um, been down here as well, kind of similar to me, studied forestry at SIU, and uh, he's now the burn crew manager, and we just all kind of really love what we're doing down here. So with that, we, a lot of these numbers you're going to hear in this presentation and kind of highlight, um, could not, you know, would not have been possible without these three. Um, Hugo Goulet uh, was hired in, with, with Nathan in October of 2016, and um, then just transitioned in May, he uh, got a job, local job in Murfreesboro with the Forest Service uh, in the fire shop. So he did a lot of work for us down here um, and now is, is uh, you know, still work, work kind of closely with him and uh, Toby um, down here in, in our daily operations. So Toby um, got hired in January 2017 and was uh, with TNC through May of 2020. And similar story now is in Vienna with the Forest Service and I got a full-time fire 
um, job. So still see Toby a lot this past spring, and we were just out on a burn this past weekend or weekend before with uh, Hugo and Toby. Uh, and then Jaime Hernandez, uh, came from Arizona, and he now um, is moved back home and is with the BLM in Arizona. So he did a lot of work for us and you know, the year, year and a half that he was around. So it was great to have him and um, nice to know he's still doing resource, you know, elsewhere. So a little bit of a background and an overview. Our uh, primary work area consists of the 11 most Southern counties of Illinois. We aid primarily the United States Forest Service and the Illinois Department of Natural Resources and various ecological restoration services. We implement treatments via chemical, mechanical, and prescribed fire methods in and around the Shawnee National Forest. And we perform timber stand improvement at federal, state, and private landowners' properties, which Nathan's going to uh, highlight and go in depth on um, here soon. So just kind of bottom left, there's a uh, me and Toby and uh, Hugo and Nathan's going to cover more of this, but we actually are able to go out west and we assist uh, with wildfire controls. This was a few years back um, in the middle. Here's Nathan Spiegel at our TNC staff retreat a few years back too. I think in 2018, uh, talking to staff about the thinning and timber stain improvement work uh, that they've done at Trail of Tears State Forest. And here's another group shot another year. We were out west again. There's Nathan. Uh, Kind of over here to the to the right, and then myself. Um, we were on an interagency uh, crew doing a wildfire control as well out west, and then uh, up tops uh, burn at Trail of Tears State Forest, uh, just kind of showing you know close up of uh, what it looks like on the fire line. So have a really uh, neat and exciting uh, new project going on called Women in Fire Fellowship. This just started this past January. And I want to highlight here just kind of a, a little excerpt from a newsletter that TNC puts out. We work closely uh, with uh, marketing folks a lot and share a lot of what we're up to. And I'll dive deep in a second. But to the right is just kind of a uh, we do a social media um, Saturday. So in Illinois spotlight posts. And uh, if you're not if you don't follow, I'll get into the next slide here. But uh, TNC on, on Facebook and so, uh, Instagram, uh, we do a lot of really cool, cool outreach. And uh, I work closely with the marketing folks to take pictures and kind of share a little insight on what we're up to. And the top left was actually uh, Emma and McKenna on their uh, first burn at um, Dixon Springs State Park down here with DNR uh, a couple months ago. So I'm gonna read something, a little write-up that we worked with uh, about the, the program here. It'll kind of give you a little more well-rounded uh, knowledge on it. So women are making history across several fields from the White House to the International Space Station, but in firefighting, there's still a battle of blaze. Currently, women only make up about 4% of structural firefighting rosters and wildland firefighter rosters, while a little better, uh, while a little better still struggle to reach 10%. Two Southern Illinois residents are taking on the challenge through the new Women in Fire program. So TNC in Illinois, in partnership with the United States Forest Service, introduced this new program, which aims to address the current lack of diversity in the fire service. Emma Inslee and McKenna Baxter are the first two members of the first Women in Fire class, making history of their own this year during Women's History Month. They were hired earlier this year, uh, back in January. Uh, both Inslee and McKenna, or uh, both Inslee and yeah, McKenna Baxter, sorry, uh, majored in forestry at Southern Illinois University and now have the opportunity to earn the experience needed to join federal or other partnering agencies as fire practitioners. Emma Inslee is a 2020 Southern Illinois University uh, Carbondale Forestry graduate. She is originally from the Atlanta area, and she is a two-time recipient of the Environmental Ambassador Award for Environmental Volunteering during her time at SIUC. She's very excited to bring her passion for conservation to TNC. Uh, McKenna Baxter is a 2019 forestry graduate from Southern Illinois University of Carbondale with a specialization in resource management. Uh, she's been working for, uh, for a year as a, as a forestry technician for a private company down in Southern Illinois and is very excited to start this new uh, step in her career with the Nature Conservancy. So the public might not automatically think of TNC in relation to firefighting, but its staff has worked with fire for decades, conducting controlled burns to manage preserves, growing skilled and diverse fire management workforces, and showing communities the importance of fire to the land. Uh, prescribed fire maintains the land, reduces invasive plant species, and improves the diversity of plants and wild uh, life by encouraging new productive growth in natural areas. So six women over the next three years will be hired as part of this annual fellowship program in downstate Carterville. Uh, we're based out of John A. Logan, which provides training on prescribed fires and fire management, including planning, preparedness, prevention, fire suppression, and fuels management. Other aspects of the program include habitat management, invasive species control, and the forest stand improvement that Nathan's going to cover in a little while. So the goal is to foster a, a pipeline of well-rounded female candidates for fire staff positions at the Shawnee National Forest or other 
um, United States Forest Service sites. So the Women in Fire Initiative not only increases diversity in the fire service and provides meaningful experience and training for young women to enter the fire and natural resources field, but also serves as a great source for representation of women who aspire to become firefighters. Our local TNC staff will work closely with these women in fire hires and mentor them as much as possible. Nathan and Ruth worked a lot with them in McKenna this past spring burn season, aiding the Forest Service and burning a little over 14,000 acres. Those numbers might change, but that was kind of the uh, update we got just recently. So very, very impressive spring uh, burn season we just had. So moving on. The, uh, this is just kind of an example of these uh, Saturday morning Southern Illinois Spotlight social media posts that uh, I work with our Chicago, uh, our marketing folks out of Chicago with. Here uh, to the left is uh, Ruth on her first burn. Actually, uh, Mike Ball snapped this cool shot of her doing some interior ignitions on the Stone Fort burn unit. Um, and then the next photo is a video, uh, also can do videos or still images of uh, Borks Falls at Fern Cliff, just kind of highlighting a waterfall. So themes change throughout the year. Uh, if we're burning, you know, if we're doing invasives or just landscape shots, just kind of a neat way to uh, gain a little more insight on what's unique about Southern Illinois and then kind of see uh, what we're up to on uh, some of the different programs and projects we're working on. So, like I said, again, if you want to check these out, uh, check out Nature Conservancy in Illinois on Facebook or Instagram, and you can follow. And uh, these come out about every uh, morning, roughly about 9 a.m. on Saturday and uh, are up for, you know, as long as you want to check them out. So. Just a little background and so kind of getting back to the program here uh here's our our project area we work in and around the 11 most southern counties of uh illinois and uh kind of in and around the shawnee national forest and i just kind of wanted to show this slide for state and federal land but also to highlight the amount of you know private land in between we uh do a lot of work with sitba the southern illinois prescribed burn association um, headed by Jesse Reekman, and uh, this past spring we were we, we we split off a lot and were able to uh, you know I'd, I'd be on an IDNR or a SIPBA burn. Uh, Nathan Ruth Emma McKenna be with the Forest Service, and Theron would either be with me or you know some even one day he split with Heritage, and we were we we burned over uh, two thousand acres kind of in one day from assisting uh, three different partners. So just kind of want to show a little bit more of our work area and really highlight the private land, which is you know critical to what's going on down here and in, in uh, treating the ecosystem as a whole. So this slide kind of um, just wanted to show again the uh, the different yellows, the natural areas, the uh, the boundaries of the Shawnee National Forest, our primary work area. And just in case you're not totally well aware, I'll give a little background on uh, this place. So the Shawnee National Forest is around 230,000 acres. It contains roughly 7,000 acres of protected natural areas. Uh, there are 80 different natural areas across the forest. Some of the different types are ecological, zoological, botanical, geological, and research natural areas. There are seven different wilderness areas in the Shawnee National Forest that total about 30,000 acres, which is roughly 10% of the entire forest. And an interesting fact about the Shawnee is that it's the second smallest forest besides the Hoosier in Indiana. However, it has the most natural areas due to George Fell, who is the founder of the natural areas movement and pioneered the Illinois natural areas inventory back in 1975, 1978. The inventory was done again in 2007 and 2010 to update current conditions and find any new candidates for protection. There are around 110 public natural areas uh, for us to explore in Southern Illinois. Some are state owned and managed, but the majority are federally owned and managed, hence the 80 I mentioned before, and all the yellow areas that you see on the image in front of you. So this is just a shot I took uh, from, you know, a natural areas. I was driving by ecological. Uh, I was working down in a wilderness area this day and kind of came up to, uh, just thought this was a neat shot, uh, Reed's Chapel. Ecological areas to so kind of just a background on essentially what is a natural area? Why is why are we working here? Um, you know, why are these places so important and critical? Well, generally, it's a protected area that harbors natural communities. Human influence and impacts are limited with exceptions. Uh, this can mean management such as invasive species control or folks hiking, botanizing, etc. Quality of natural areas varies. Uh, not every park or preserve qualifies for a greater level of protection. And protection in this case means legal protection from uses other than natural areas. So the highest quality natural areas, often with rare species, rare natural communities, or other significant features, may be controlled with greater limitations on allowable uses. Um, and another notable aspect was that uh, early land protection in Illinois was targeted towards developing recreation areas, and then arose the idea of protecting nature for nature's sake and future generations. So the natural areas movement really began with the hope to ensure natural heritage of the land for future folks to enjoy 
as it is and has evolved over time in its natural form. So the next slide, just uh, an example. I was uh, I was here in the spring. You can see this; these are all from the same same natural area. Uh, I'm not going to give a specific name, but you can tell with all in the same day with the rain. I was doing an assessment of some chemical work I'd done a while back, and it's just kind of an example of how unique and neat these places are. So one natural area here, I I found you know yellow lady slipper orchid, um, population of false Solomon seal, climbing milkweeds, metelia, um, wild ginseng spider wart and uh, you know groves of golden seal. So it just kind of shows the botanical diversity and the quality of these places that we're working in. So I'm gonna give a kind of a tour in a little bit, but I wanted to, I'm gonna reference a lot of the work we're doing. And before I do, I kind of, you're probably maybe wondering, you know, how do you track what you're up to and, and uh, where all you go? And here's just kind of another screenshot. We use this uh, collector app and I'm not gonna get too in depth on for time constraints on the GIS base, but we use uh, GIS software, kind of use our own phones and uh, track basically what we're up to each day from, from this app. And uh, I just wanna show all the color again, you see now orange is chemical work, purple is mechanical, the light blue is reconnaissance and just kind of show in a year's time how much we really do get around down here. So here's just uh, some screenshots from the app. Um, I'm sure a lot of folks know about LaRue Pine Hills, but here's just an example of how we use it in, in, a, in one site, maybe in a year's time, you know, how much we do really get around. So uh, you can see fire line, if we're cutting new fire line, we can stream stream a line and tracks and then send that into the forest service and have an updated, you know, hand line. Uh, can wrap around burn units and then we track a lot of the purples, probably garlic mustard roadside and then orange will be different chemical work. We're doing silt grass here or spraying garlic mustard or kind of other invasives. So I just want to give a little bit of a screenshot to kind of let you see the drop downs and how, how we actually use the app. Here's kind of another example, um, a wilderness area, Garden of the Gods, there to do garlic mustard there um, throughout the year and just kind of show again, you know, if we're going out one day and say Nathan's going to get out and uh, wasn't here the year before, well, he can pull up collector and see what I did, find the locations and go out and treat. So it's a very efficient way for us to get around and kind of maintain uh, numbers of what we're up to. So Getting back to Southern Illinois, I just kind of want to show a little more on, on the natural divisions of this, this place um, and kind of where all we work. So you can kind of see the, uh, we're in the Southern section, the Illinois Ozarks, um, spots like LaRue Pine Hills, Trail of Tear State Forest. Uh, we, we would do a lot of um, work in the lower Mississippi River bottomland section. Um, Shawnee Hills, the greater Shawnee Hills of our sandstone, the lesser of our limestone component, and then our coastal plain division, kind of the southern half of the state, our Cretaceous Hills section and bottomland section, uh, spots like Horseshoe Lake and then, you know, Cretaceous Hills, a lot of different natural areas there on, the, on federal property and kind of southern Pope County. Um, so just wanted to show, you know, why is this place so unique? Well, these converge just these four uh, physiographic regions down here. And here's just kind of one more, a more of a visual to show um these areas here so you can really see you know here's the the um mississippi river bottomland section we'll do a lot of burns uh, even growing season a lot of open lens units for um you know mig migratory uh, waterfowl and different nesting birds um illinois ozarks we do a lot of work in trail of tears nathan's going to cover the percent improvement work we just assisted the forest service this past spring down here uh ozark hill prairie did about 1200 acres aerial ignition with the helicopter um, here's the just kind of a visual of the greater Shawnee Hills, that darker green going through of our sandstone component, and then our uh, lesser Shawnee Hills, that limestone component. And a lot of cool glades uh, in the limestone, and a lot of a lot of really neat barren communities, and you know different features in those those regions. And then here's kind of the darker blues, that Cretaceous Hills section, and then the bottomland section um, kind of down here. So I just like to kind of show a little more, really get you a better visual of what's going on. So with that. Um, double branch hole is probably one of my favorite uh, natural areas to get to work in. Um, it's one of 80 on the Shawnee. Prominent features of this site are sandstone cliffs and barrens which surround Hayes Creek. The sandstone component is why it is part of the Greater Shawnee Hills Natural Division. Um, you can really see the water's power here over time. Uh, the drainage heads west down into Hayes Creek and below the image you can see is a beautiful hole with a double uh, waterfall. Hayes Creek has carved a canyon at this site and it just reiterates the unique landscapes present throughout the Shawnee Hills Natural Division and specifically the sandstone component of the greater Shawnee Hills you see here. This site in particular, we've done a lot of uh, consecutive garlic mustard treatments here over the years and we just help, uh, helped implement a near 1500 acre prescribed burn at Jackson Hole and Double Branch um, this past uh, spring uh, back in March with the Forest Service here. 
So I'm kind of giving a visual tour, but then I'm going to highlight some of the work we've done at each of these spots. So here's, here's kind of an example of the map using collector again. Here's the garlic mustard we've done, the orange, and then a Chinese yam at Jackson Hole, the blue. So just kind of want to show again, I had the Shawnee uh, GIS shop send me some maps to highlight and all these were in 2020. So here's kind of an example of Simpson Township, Barron's ecological area and the lesser Shawnee Hills. I took uh, all the photos you're seeing I've, I've taken. Um, this was uh, after a prescribed burn um, a couple of springs ago. I went out just to do an assessment and also was treating garlic mustard roadside this day and I uh, couldn't help but snap a couple of cool photos here. Um, so here's just kind of, uh, took it in April when I was there and here's just kind of an example of, you know, the prescribed firework we're doing. Look at all the cool stuff that's uh, that's popping. Dwarf Larkspur, Grove of Pussy Toes, uh, Hoary Pacoons, probably one of my favorite um, species to see. Spiderwort, alum root, um, a flock species, and American Columbo. Um, so this kind of really does show the importance of prescribed fire and, and uh, you know, the, the proper disturbance and kind of what rebounds. Um, here's kind of an example besides the burn, the roadside stuff I was showing about, do garlic mustard here. And here's the both natural areas you can see in the map. And then uh, blue is kind of a combination species doing different invasives. And uh, throughout the year, I mean, we might come back to the same site, you know, half a dozen times or more uh, to treat. So a lot of these sites you're seeing, we're not just coming one time, it's it's several times. Um, here's a look at Heron Pond Nature Preserve, highlighting the Coastal Plain Division. This is probably one of the most you know, well-known and famous nature preserves around. Um, it's part of the Little Black Slough Nature Preserve, which is one of the most popular spots in the Cache River. Um, the boardwalk you see here in the image allows you to really get an up close and personal experience in the Cache River wetlands. You can walk through the uh, swamp right by ancient cypress tupelo trees and up close to the waterfowl, turtles, snakes, and other various aquatic species. Um, so each season here is kind of an experience of its own, but I thought this was, this was a cool visual to highlight the uh, coastal plain division. Here's a, here's a shot of the Rupine Hills Research National Area. Um, we're up top in the Ozarks and then overlooking the lower Mississippi River Bottomlands Division. Uh, I took this shot um, another day when I was out here working doing invasives and just you know thought this view is super impressive. We're looking out west of the Mississippi and the Big Muddy River Valleys and you can kind of see those sloughs and wetlands and how you know awesome this uh, ecosystem is. Is it a spot like this? So here's just an example um, of some of the work we do here. You know, we've done a lot of fire here, different fire line, done a lot of different burns over the years. And here's just kind of another example. This was actually Nathan this past year. He got out a lot to Peru. Um, look at all the, the species he was treating, you know, garlic mustard, Chinese. I mean, it's not good that it's there, but it just shows, you know, we're, we're on it and uh, how much we get around and, and kind of the different work, different colors, and how organized we are with our data collection. Um, just kind of goes to show again, uh, you know, super, super high quality spot and how, uh, how much TNC is working here at this spot. Um, with that, I want to move into Les Creek Wilderness, just highlight one wilderness area we work in um, different times. Here's a screenshot from Collector. Um, you can kind of see here that there are seven different wilderness areas uh, combined. They, they total about 30,000 acres, which is roughly 10% of the forest. Um, and here's just kind of another, like I said, screenshot from Collector. You can see here's the reconnaissance, different garlic mustard, thorough reconnaissance time. And here's kind of another map of, of uh, these treatments where, you know, you can just kind of see the thoroughness and, you know, look at just reconnaissance. You know, this, this spot I might uh, got to highlight because it's will hike miles and I really only spray like a gallon or two at this site um, doing 2% glyphosate mix because of just how high quality and we've been on these populations for so long we about have them kind of taken care of. So just wanted to show a little bit too on here's here's from all photos of I've taken most of these I think Nathan took the southern flying squirrel um, then a TNC we had a photographer take the great blue heron down at the cache but I just wanted to show I was at a Bay Creek wilderness uh, working and this was the craziest thing I've probably ever seen this hickory horn devil caterpillar. <laughs> Uh, cave salamander, I love seeing salamanders out. We see a lot of venomous snakes, copperheads, uh, timber rattlesnakes here, these two. Uh, roadside at Burden Falls is this fritillary butterfly uh, feeding on some common milkweed. I think Nathan was prepping a burn unit one day and saw this southern flying squirrel. So I just kind of wanted to show again a little bit more of the critters um, that we, we see and experience and really just sums up, you know, why we're doing what we're doing, uh, where we're at with uh, you know, all these really neat ecosystems and then 
just to show again, I want to show a little bit more of the uh, bigger picture of unfortunately one of the worst invasives we deal with, which is kudzu. Uh, here's a Poco Cemetery Barrens here. You can see Theron. Um, we, we came in and we actually treated the stilt grass prior. Um, that way, whenever we treated the kudzu, it wasn't going to explode. And then we came in and sprayed the kudzu and here I am foliar spraying. Um, you can kind of see some of these are pretty intense infestations to share. So I kind of wanted to share a little bit more on the invasives. Like I said, Nathan's going to cover a lot of the fire and the thinning work. So I'm kind of wrapping up here and I just wanted to show three slides of our treatment totals uh, that you can see. So here's 10% improvement. 2018 totals, and that's why I wanted to reference Hugo, Toby, and Jaime. They were a big part of these numbers. Um, you know, 165 acres could have been a, um, a lot of different sites. Uh, I know we we're, you know, doing state sites, giant city trail of tears, and forest service. Now we'll do site prep, it's kind of similar TSI on different project areas. Um, you know, our job is highly dependent on the weather. So that's where some of these in years, you know, you're going to see a huge number of fire, other years you're not. But um, you know, a lot, a lot of the work we do too is, is a uh, unit prep. And like I said before, we, we split off a lot, help a lot of different partners, you know, our, our DNR and forest service where Nathan and Ruth and, uh, you know, Emma and McKenna now are pretty well tied with the forest service daily. And I, I break off a lot and uh, with Theron and we uh, help, you know, IDNR out. Um, but here's kind of the unit prep. So, you know, 11,851 acres, 19 different units. And a lot of those days, it's not a single day, it's, you know, multiple days. So we're going out and doing this kind of stuff. Uh, here's kind of an invasives number, you know, almost 200 acres in 2018, uh, treating six different species, multiple different sites, and reconnaissance too. A uh, perk on collector I like is uh, we can track really where we're at, how efficient we're being looking for spots um, out. So here's a 2019 total just to show again. Uh, look at that. The numbers, you know, went up way a lot higher for the timber stand improvement work. Our fire work, you know, doubled. A little more than doubled and you know obviously we maybe that spring uh you know had a had a drier spring able to get a lot more in uh 22 different units prepped you know 24,280 amongst uh, 25 different units uh, treated you know 133 acres of different of uh, 13 different species so doubled uh, that's a lot of those combo sites some some sites uh, do and you know there's 600 acres of species inventoried and a lot of that's we did the Kincaid waterfall projects um a lot of different sites where sometimes we'll do like botanical surveys. Uh, it might be a priority for the Forest Service that uh, we'll do for you know a few weeks time. So that's where those numbers kind of increase, and that's why we honestly rely on collectors so much to track and show what we're up to. So wrapping up here, the last slide I just want to show um, treatment totals for 2020. Uh, this past year, as you know, even though COVID was around, we, we still got out and still made a big impact down here. And just kind of thought these numbers are still impressive. You know, we had staff transitions and a lot of this, a lot of these numbers, even I uh, just kind of Nathan and I uh, in the summer getting out Theron and, um, you know, Hugo and Toby um, took off in May. So we just kind of still wanted to show a little bit more on what we were up to this, this past year and still had a really, really good year and productive year. So with that, I'd love to share more. It's, it's uh, got a lot more to talk about, but um, right now I want to turn it over to Nathan Spiegel to share the uh, timber stand improvement and uh, firework we do. So. Thanks again for joining and I hope you enjoyed this. So, see ya.